Now you, now you can count down from 10, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to today's lesson for mathematical literacy. So, uh, taking over from last week, we had started with the finance section. Today we are continuing with that and today's lesson will be focused on budget, income and expenditure statements. So, oh, what is a budget? This, this is I think this is a term almost all every one of us is familiar with. A budget is a plan for using income to cover expenses. So it's what you'd normally draw up. Maybe you want to manage your money much better. That's what everyone is always advised to do. If you want to manage your money better and to monitor how what you spend your money on, you know, you'd need to draw up a budget so that at least it guides you and you know where your money is going, where your money is coming from and how you're managing all of that. So the two things that are involved in the budget are there's an income and there are expenses. So you have an income, which is money coming into your account, which needs to then help you pay for the expenses that you have. So people would usually draw up a budget for maybe a monthly budget that you know you're spending this money monthly. Maybe for people who work, usually they know they're getting a salary for the month. Maybe others like students, you'd get an allowance from your parents and you drop a budget on how you're using up that allowance. So it depends on what the budget is for. Maybe you're planning a trip, so you have a travel budget where you have food, transport, accommodation, all of those things. Yeah? So first point is the income. Income could be, examples of income would be salary, which is monthly earnings from an employer. It could be wages, which are weekly earnings from an employer. It could be commission, people who work probably in sales, they know that if you sell 10 items, you get 10% of that. So that's the commission explained here. It would be profit, which is extra money gained on sales of goods and services. Say you are selling probably a packet of chips or you're selling lemonade and you know the profit you make from that, that is your income. Gifts, gifts could also count as just donations or Maybe the allowance you get from your parents. That's just money you get. Yay. Then you have financial assistance. Financial assistance could also count as that money maybe you get from your parents again. Or money you applied for, you know, money that is incoming. Any, as long as it's money that is coming into your account, it would count as an income. Rental income for a property. So if you own properties, and then there are tenants in your property and they are renting monthly. They will give you money to pay for rent. So that would be income. So as I explained, anything that is incoming, income there means incoming. It's coming in your account. And then expenses, this is money going out of your account. It's money you are spending. It is exiting. So living expenses, you're paying rent, you're buying food, you're buying electricity and water. There are accounts, probably people have clothing accounts, they have cell phone accounts, telephone, you're paying your telephone bill, there's insurance, there are personal taxes, there are loan repayments, there are savings. Savings, yes, it's yours, but it's, it's coming out from your account where you use your money daily to where you are saving it. So it's moving out from the money you have at your disposal to a money where you're going to keep it safe somewhere. So that would be your savings. Salaries and wages. So this would apply if you are the employer and you are paying people salaries and wages. So it would be in terms of business wise, that would be an expense on the side of the business and then business running expenses. So these examples fit different types of scenarios. So no, they're not for a particular scenario. They could be for business, they could be for personal, they could be for families, you know, it's just different examples that you'd normally encounter. An example here when we're doing a small business example. So suppose the scenario is a small business, a budget and income expenditure statement. The difference between the two is for a small business, suppose you're running Excuse a me, teacher. 
Yes. Apology for the interruption, but your slides are not moving forward. We are still on the first slide that shows your uh, entrance, mathematical literacy, grade 12. Kobe, I need you to help me. I don't know what to do or how to make them move. Yeah, let's been... go back to that screen that you had before. And for this session, I think we just run it like that. The screen that, that was appearing on the side. Yes, I think that's the safest. Let's start with that. This one. Yes, ma'am. And if you now can move for towards the slide that you are, that you currently are at. OK. Let's see if that changes. Exactly, that's it. Thank you very much. You can continue. Apologies for the interruption. I can continue from here. I should go back to the, the view here. Is this view fine? Your choice, ma'am. You can go to, be, to the beginning as well, just to show all the slides to the students. Okay, let me go back then. This is a review of the budget, the different types of budgets we've just, the, no, the different, the types of income and expenses I've just explained. And then the next one, this one now is the example I was still trying to discuss, the example of budget and income expenditure statement for typical example would be a small business. Our business right now, let's say we're having you running a tech shop, yeah? So what would be a budget for a tech shop? This, this is explaining the difference between the two. A budget for a small business estimates the expected cost based on, their, on other similar businesses or historical data as the business becomes more established. So a budget here, you are still estimating. Ne? It's not actual cost. These are estimates or this is how you would like to spend the money for the business for that particular month. So this is the planning stage. You're still planning on how you will be spending your money and therefore you are estimating how much you'll actually be spending on things. So what could this be based on? It needs to be based on something. You can't just plan and it is, it's not based on anything. So that's why it could be based on other similar businesses. So other similar tech shops how much they usually spend per month or historical data. Probably the business has been running for long and you've had the business for five years. So you know you usually spend this much money every month. So this is what a budget would be for. And then an income and expenditure statement. This one reports the actual expenditure and income. The, here you report the actual expenditure and income and is used to more accurately analyze and prepare a budget. So once you have an income and expenditure, this one comes after. So this one you have it at the end of the month. So this is beginning of April, right? You drop a budget for the money you want to spend in April. And then month and April, you then have your income and expenditure statement where now you have the actual expenditure and income recorded there. There you'd have the actual money you, you had coming into the business and you'd have the actual money spent from the business that is recorded now in your statements or in your banking fees or in your books, your financial records in the business. So the difference between the two is for a budget it's still estimated and there are no actual figures there. But an income and expenditure statement, here you have the actual amounts recorded for both. The types of income with expenses here, we will discuss it further when we do selling prices and profits and break even analysis. But you'd have different types. You know you'd have fixed 
it's either fixed income or fixed expenses. This one, you know, it is fixed. It does not change per month. So if you are working for an employer, you know for a fact you're getting a salary of probably 5,000 a month. So that is fixed. Whether there's, no matter what happens, you are getting that 5,000 rand. So that would be amount that is fixed. That's usually an example of a salary. And that would also be for ex expenses side, it would be your rent. You know you are paying rent regardless of whatever happens. Rent will remain fixed. Then variable costs, they change over time according Apology, to the situation. Teacher, can I interrupt again? We are still yeah. on slide three on our side. Kobe, <laughs> uh, uh, what would you advise? Do I do I wait to for for the slide to appear or before I continue teaching or? I think my suggestion would be for you to click on the slides on the left hand side. So if you go over to the fourth slide, just click on the fourth slide for it to open up. Let's experiment on that quickly. There you go. You're on slide five now. Yes. Perfect. So I, th I suggest that you click on those slides and then it changes on our side as well. OK, so is this view OK for you guys? This one right now? Yes, it is visible and it's full screen. Thank you very much. OK. So the, the variable income or expenses. So an example of a variable expense would be your electricity bill. You'd find that in winter you're spending more money in ele on electricity costs because you're now using more electrical appliances like heaters and then you may be taking you know, the heaters and then you're cooking more often as opposed to other times. So those change over time. Or probably you are away for two weeks from your house and you didn't use that much electricity or that much water and that's why they would vary from time to time. And then the variable for income would also be an example of commission. So for people who work in sales and they earn commission based. Probably this month you sold 10 items and you got 10% from those 10 items. Next month you're selling 20 items and you're getting 10% from 20 items. So those vary from time to time. The occasional means it occurs from time to time. Occasional here would be maybe gifts. You don't, you're not guaranteed to get gifts, so that could be occasional. It's your birthday and then your birthday, your birthday you're getting more money because people are gifting you money or, you know, they're giving you other things and you're probably spending more because you want to go celebrate. So that's the difference. Those, those, the, the highlighted terms there, they explain clearly. As long as you think of the meaning of the highlighted terms, even beside, outside of math, it would make more sense. Then, next one. Is it fine, Kobe? I hope it's fine. And then it should. There are several things you should aim for in your personal budget. What are the things you're aiming for in your personal budget? It should list all of the items that are needed and should try to anticipate unforeseen expenses. So it should be very flexible. It shouldn't be so fixed that should anything go wrong, then you are stranded and you don't have money to cover all those other expenses. It should be realistic You can so that you can stick to it. So you know, so it base base like we said it based on historical data. You know you usually spend this much on lunch, this much on transport. It should, it, that's why it should be realistic. Should focus on the high priority items, essential items such as food and health care. Because high priority items, you cannot change them, you cannot postpone them. If you are hungry, you would need to get groceries. So focus and put your high priority or your needs first in your budget before you put entertainment and all other costs there in the end. Because like we said, high priority items, these are the needs. You cannot postpone them for a later time. You cannot change them. They are constant. And then if too much of the income is spent on non-essential items and not on savings, your budget is going to become problematic in the future. It will because then when you need your essentials and they are not budgeted for and you've already already spent your money on non-essentials, then the problem will start. An ideal budget should include a plan to save money for the future or to pay off debt and allow to allow for savings in the following months. Mm -hmm. So it's advisable. This, this, this more than anything teaches financial literacy where you need to be very wise with how you spend your money 
and wise with how you handle your your own costs and expenses to 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 uh, to be free to live a life where you are free and you know you are flexible and you can spend on things you need and you 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 don't find yourself in debt it should be balanced if your income is less than your expenses then you, you need to revise it until the two sides balance if your income is more than your expenses, then you should plan to save the extra money. So that that is the main important thing. It should balance. You can never have a point where you have expenses that are more than your income. You need to live within your means. If you know you're getting five thousand, then make your make sure your expenses are way below that five thousand, so that it balances and you you'd be able to manage your money. Then activity one. Oh, okay. Activity, I'm moving to the next activity now. Activity one. Douglas wants to travel from Cape Town to Devon to visit his cousin. His parents said that they can give him 500 rands towards the trip. He decides to draw up a budget to determine how much money the trip will cost. His uncle has offered to give him a lift home, so he only needs to budget for the trip to Devon. He has 2,000 rands saved in his bank account, and he wants to have some spending money left over when he gets there. He phones Rainbow Buses to find out how much it costs to travel from Cape Town to Devon, and they give him two options. Option one, he leaves on Saturday morning and travels straight to Devon. The trip would cost 1,200 rands and you will need to pay for three meals at 30 rands per meal. Option two, leave Saturday morning and travel to Platon Bank Bay first. The trip costs only 400 rands. He can then catch a bus on Sunday morning to Devon. The bus trip will cost 500 rands. If he does this, he needs to find a place to stay on Saturday night and budget for three extra meals, estimated at 30 rands each. He estimates that a backpacker's lodge would be the cheapest place to stay at 200 rands a night. So now, we need to copy the above budget statement sheet and fill in the amounts for income and expenses in the correct columns for option one. So option one, we are told, firstly, the, the, the main information at the top there, we need to fill it in now. We need to distribute this information into income and expenses and categorize it correctly. First sentence there, we are told that his parents give him 500 rands towards the trip. This is money that is coming from his parents to him. So it's going into his account. Therefore, it will count as income. The next part is he has 200, 2,000 rands saved in his bank account. So his savings are their income. They are in income because they are in his account and they, they, it's not living. The 2,000 rands, there, it's income. Then next point, we are focused on option one. We are told the bus fare. For the bus, he will have to pay 1,200 rands and that is listed in the expenses. He will also need to pay for three meals at 30 rands per meal. So that is three multiplied by 30, which is equals to 90. So now when you're done with putting your, 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 your money in the correct categories, then we go on to calculating the running total of money that he has. In this last category, the last column there, you leave it for last after you've put in your different amounts in the categories. Why? We need those two categories to work out the last one. In the very first row, we see there's income of 500 rands and there's nothing on expenses. So it's 500 rands. We put them the running cost. That's the very first money we have. The next part, you add the money that you have in the running total plus the one we have on the income. So how we work this out for the last column, the running total, whatever is on the income column, we add it. And whatever we find on the expenses, we subtract it. Because expenses, it's going out. So it's meaning it's going to be deducted from the account. And that's why we would subtract. So it's going to be 500 rands first. 
because the 2000 is on the income, it's going to be 500 plus 2000, you have 2500. Then for expenses, there's 1200. Because that is expenses, you're going to say 2500 minus 1200, then you're left with 1300. Then the 1300 subtract the 90 rands for expenses, you are left with 1210 cents. So there's nothing on accommodation there. So the total running money that he has is 1,210 rand. This means this is the money he has left after all the expenses are paid. Next part now, we are working on option two. Option two, firstly, we still have the 500 rand. The income didn't change. He has the 500 rand from the parents and the 2,000 rand that he has saved. Then the 400 rands for the bus that he got there, the first 400 rands is for the bus ride. Then the 500 rand is then for the bus that is taking him to Devon because the first bus was taking him to Platenburg Bay. Then the second bus is taking him to Devon. So it's the 400 plus the 500, which is 900 rands. You could even have on the left there, instead of bus fare, you could have transport or whatever, as long as it explains what's happening here. Then secondly, it's the meals on the bus. We are told it's going to be each bus ride, he will be spending for three meals at 30 rands each. So there are two bus rides here. That means he has six meals at 30 rands each. Then it's going to be 180 rands. Then he will spend 200 rands on accommodation at the backpackers lodge. Then we will put it there in the expenses. Then we go to the total running costs. The 500 rands for income plus the 2000 rands for savings, we have 2500. Then we go on to subtracting all the expenses. 2500 minus 900 is 1600. 1600 minus 180, it's 1420. 1,420 minus 200, mm, there's a mistake there, 1,420 minus 200, it's supposed to be 1,220 there. I hope you can see that, let me try and rectify that just now. It's 1,220 that we have at the very last point after subtracting the 200 rents for expenses, 1,220. After subtracting the, the 200 rand for accommodation. I hope this is clear. Okay, so in this part now in option two, he is left with 1,220. And then option one, he was left with 1,000. 210. The next question now is question B. Would you advise Douglas to take option one or option two? Explain your answer. In option one, he was left with 1,210 rands. In option two, he is left with 1,220. Now, which one would you advise him to take? I think for one, we could say, although the bus fare for option two, the, the easier one, one would normally just think, let him go for option two, since it's cheaper, right? Because he's saving, but it's like, it's, he's spending more for option one than he is for option two. But if you look at the circumstances of this case, he is traveling to Devon. Option one is much more convenient and it is quicker. So, in your personal opinion, in this case, I think it, the answer would depend on, on how you explain it or how you reason your answer. So if you choose option two, you'd probably say it's because it's the cheaper option. But when you look more into the information that you have, you'd find that option one is really more convenient and, and quicker. And when you look at the difference in saving, in option one, it only, it, it's option two will only save him 10 rands. So 10 rand is, is reasonable enough to, to sacrifice for a more convenient and a quicker trip. But this one will really be based 
on your opinion and how you reason it. So when you reason quite good, you would get the mark as long as you reason and it makes sense. So anyone would be correct here. But my one, the one I went with is because option one is more convenient and quicker. So yes, we get that option two is cheaper, but I think convenience is much more, especially just for 10 rands in this case. Then now the next slide. Are there any questions yet that I should, should I entertain questions COVID or leave it for very end? Or there are no questions at the moment. Okay, let me move on to the next example that we have here. So the next example is draw up an income and expense statement for the household for this month. So we are told here the information on our right is giving us the house, the, 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 the monthly expenses for this household. There's rent for 2,300 rents. There's transport for 520 rands, the cell phone for 200 rands, prepaid electricity for 800 rands, water bill for 350 rands, TV contract for 250 rands, loan repayment, furniture store account, clothing store account, groceries and medical expenses. So all of those are the expenses for this household. They live on the following monthly income. There's a state pension of 1,140 rands, a disability grant of 1,140 rands, and a salary of 5,250. This month, one of the children falls ill and they have additional medical expenses of 500 rands for doctor's visits and medication. So when we draw up the income and expense statement, why is this an income and expense statement as opposed to it being a budget? It is an income and expense statement because now it is a reflection of the costs of the expenses and income they've had, this household has had for the month. Income, we have the state pension, the very top, we have the state spent pension, we have the disability grant and we have the salary under income. Then, we move on. We have what to follow? We have rent. Rent, which is 2,300 rent. We have 5,220 for transport, 200 rent, cell phone. So all the expenses. Fortunately, in this information, we given expenses at the top and the income at the bottom. So we just dropped all the, the expenses now in the list there on the right, down through to what? to the medical expenses. So now we are told that the medical expenses, they charge them 500 rands for doctor's visits there. And then we, are, we also have the 75 rands at the very top there. So at the total, then you have all your expenses. Then your expenses total 8,690 and your income it's totaling 7,530. I'm sorry I put it under medical expenses there. So you see when we compare it to before we even move on, we can see that expenses were more than the income for this household. They spent 8,690 and only had an income of 7,530. Then next question is, what is the total difference between the income and expenses? We are working out the difference now between income and expenses. So what they say here is we say 8,690 minus 7,530. The 8,690 is for the expenses, 7,530 is for the income. We subtract that is equal to 1,160. So there is more for expenses than they receive in income. So they spent 1,160 more than they actually have. Which costs could be reduced in their budget? So looking at this information here, which costs can this family afford to reduce so that they can be able to reduce their budget? We're looking at different things here. Water and electricity usage could be reduced. 
the furniture and store accounts could be paid off and closed and grocery expenses could be reduced. Now this could be up for debate really and it's also again it's based on probably based on personal opinion it could be based on circumstances you are familiar with you know it's based on very different things that's why people here would answer differently for example would say they could save on water and electricity they probably could save on that but you'd find that maybe they're not even using that much of water and electricity to begin with the other reason would be they, they really probably really just can't afford they not they, they can not afford their life at the end of the day. The furniture and store accounts. This, the second reason is saying the furniture and store accounts could be paid off and closed. So yeah, that could still also take months because with the income that they have, it probably wouldn't be easy to just close off all your accounts once off and then move on to other mm -hmm. expenses. So that is also still up for debate and the grocery expenses could be reduced. Now we could say that they could reduce groceries, but probably they still maybe not even getting enough groceries as they need. So this, like I said, it's based on personal opinion and personal circumstances. One would argue that how could they reduce groceries if maybe they are only living on basics or essentials? What exactly do they reduce from these essentials now? Another would probably suggest that they cancel the TV contract because that is really, it's not a need. We can argue again that they could cancel the cell phone contract. You know, this could be up for debate. Uh, you can contact, you know, when you respond on the social media link, we can debate this one so that we get to the real issue here. And then D, if the costs were reduced, would the family have enough money to cover the expenses? Okay, now. Let's suppose they had reduced all those costs we listed in C. They reduced all of those costs. Would the family have enough money to cover their expenses? The difference was 1,160. So yes, they could. They could cover their expenses. Why? Because the difference is only about 1,160. It's not like it's about 10,000 or 100,000 difference. It's only 1,160. So to reduce small reductions in those different expenses there, probably 5% or 2% reductions there and they would bring down their expenses and they would put them in line with their income. So the main, the main point of this here and the lesson here is that your income and your expenses need to balance because as we've seen here, they have spent way more than they have, which means where exactly did they get the extra 1,160? That explains that probably they are in debt now because probably the, the one person had to go borrow from either the bank or from friends to be able to cover the expenses. You'd find that the medical expenses, as they said here, the medical expenses here, they were not budgeted for. And then they needed to now make a plan last minute because this is something, it's an essential one you cannot put aside for later. When the child is sick, they need to go see a doctor and their medical expenses to pay for at that very moment. That is why it's very important that your, your account, bal your balances, your income and expenses, they balance. But most importantly, in order to ensure that they balance, you need to make sure that you budget accordingly each month so you can be able to live within your means. So that is it from me today. The, these are the resources you could look up for more information and I found them very helpful. There's a grade 12 mathematical literacy mobile app. This would help you with activities, past papers. There's, there are links to past papers there that you can use to practice and then it's categorized under activities. It's categorized to the different topics that we cover. You'd find a section on finance and the activities on finance there to help you practice. The Siavula Mathematical Literacy Textbook, you'll find it, it's free online for now. You can use it. There's the Via Africa Mathematical Literacy Grade 12 Textbook, and there's Mind the Gap Study Guide for Mathematical Literacy Grade 12. So play around the, the DBE website as well. You'll find a lot of resources there that you can use to practice whilst you're at home and prepare yourself for exams. At least here, you can also find 
questions that are usually asked in exam papers to ensure that you know you are familiar with how questions are asked and you get more comfortable answering the questions in that structure as well. The next topic tomorrow, we will be covering banking statements, we'll be doing banking fees, and we'll be doing types of bank accounts and services. Then these are the links you can follow for more information. I know you're probably not familiar with MS Teams, but we'll get better at this, guys. Please forgive me for any glitches that were there today. We'll get used to it and we'll practice and until we find. And then if you know any more classmates which we had last week, you can invite them to attend the classes. Thank you so much. Toby, I'm done. What should I do now?